I'm Athena, and we're gonna make some gloves. Today, we're gonna to be doing my most requested tutorial on TikTok, which is how to make gloves. This is actually the first episode in a series of videos in which I'll be doing various glove projects, but we're gonna start with how to make a super simple glove. Next up, we're gonna be doing uh, pointy finger gloves and scrunch gloves, and then a more proper pair of gloves with um, more seams and more tailoring for the hand. But this is the simple glove. This easy glove technique is like one step above the drag queen classic of just tracing parts of your body. We're just gonna step it up a little bit with some measurements and a little bit of math. When I say this project is easy, that's a relative term. What's easy for me might be difficult for someone else, and we all come to crafting and sewing with different ability levels. Feel free to reach out to me and ask about ways to make these projects more accessible, or also if you have ideas um, or tips of your own, please let me know. Now let's circle back to math. Math is not something that you need to be afraid of in sewing. I know a lot of people really don't like doing math and as soon as we are done with school, it's like, thank God I never have to do math again. And it can be really intimidating when you're working in materials that you care about that it's sort of hinging on your ability to do math. But you don't have to be afraid of math in sewing. You can use a calculator or you can use tape measure math. Now, some of you might be familiar with this, but basically to do tape measure math, you just start with your number that you're trying to divide. So say it's 15, and I need to know what half of 15 is. So I'm just gonna fold my tape measure to 15 in half, and then that will tell me that seven and a half is the number that I'm looking for. So say I need to double 15. I just fold it at 15, and then look at that, it's 30. Okay, so say I need to do a quarter of 15. Then I fold it once and then twice. And I can find out that that is three and three quarters. So often when we're making patterns and sewing, the, the most frequent thing we need to know is like what's half of a number, what's a quarter of a number, but you actually can get pretty advanced with doing tape measure math. It's just about being good at folding. So for what we're doing today, for the most part, you can just use tape measure math. So in addition to a tape measure and maybe a calculator, you're gonna need your fabric. So to make these gloves, you need a fabric with a pretty good amount of stretch in it, and you need a fabric with a four-way stretch. This is a stretch vinyl, but it only stretches in one direction. That's a two-way stretch. Doesn't stretch this way, does stretch this way. You could try, but it's gonna work much easier if you use something with a four-way stretch. So I do have this pair of red um, vinyl gloves that I made with a stretch vinyl that has a four-way stretch. So if you want to do a vinyl glove, try to look for a four-way stretch if you can. Anything that you can find that is going to have a good amount of stretch in it is gonna work really well. I love working with power mesh, a knit jersey, spandex, mesh and stretch vinyl, the stretchier the better for this. So you're gonna need about a half a yard of your fabric. You're gonna need matching thread. You're going to need paper, pencil, scissors, sewing machine, and that's it. So let's grab your materials and get started. First, we're collecting measurements. The length of your arm from bicep to wrist and where your elbow is. The circumference of your wrist, elbow, and bicep. Now lay out a large piece of paper, long enough for the length of your arm plus your hand. Start by drawing a straight line, which will be a fold line. Then rest your pinky against the line and spread your fingers wide. Trace your hand. Now divide your wrist measurement by two and mark that at the wrist of your hand tracing. Measure across your palm, divide by two, and mark that on your hand tracing. Then do the same for your knuckles. Now divide the knuckle line by four and mark that along the line. This is for your fingers. Use your markings to refine your hand tracing, making the fingers a bit wider and then taper the points of your fingers. Now mark the length of your arm starting from the wrist 
and mark your elbow. Divide your elbow and bicep by two. Here you can see me doing tape measure math and then mark them on the elbow and bicep points. Connect the wrist to the elbow to the bicep and taper off the pattern at the bicep so that it ends on a right angle. Cut out your pattern and lay it on your folded fabric. Do not add seam allowance. Trace around your pattern with a marking tool of your choice. I am only using a green sharpie so that it shows better on camera. Pin the fabric around your markings but not on the traced lines and cut generously around your glove, leaving lots of excess fabric. Repeat for the other glove. So when you take this to your machine, you're not going to have the seam allowances cut out because it's going to make it so much easier to do especially these tricky finger curves on your machine. So we're going to use a small to medium sized zigzag stitch. Um, I know that I always stress that you need to have a matching thread color, so today you're going to do as I say and not as I do because this is all I had. Go ahead and take it to your machine. Stitch around the curves gently, doing your best not to stretch the fabric as you sew. When you reach corners, insert your needle into the fabric and lift your presser foot. Make a few stitches in the ditch between your fingers and rotate again. Take your time with this process and don't rush. It's really important that you follow the lines, stick to your pattern, and take your time. It'll be worth it in the end. Now that the stitching is all done, it's finally time to trim that excess away. And we are going to get as close to the seam as possible without cutting that thread. It's really important that you don't cut your thread. And since it's a zigzag, remember to be careful. It's about the journey, even though it's also about the destination, um, but just take your time. And I would say I am getting about an eighth of an inch away from the seam, but it's not that serious, you guys. You don't have to measure this distance, just eyeball it. Cut between your fingers very carefully. I'm living dangerously by using my shears, but you can use smaller detail scissors. Now that it's all cut out, it is time for my absolute favorite part. I love turning gloves because you can just put your hand inside. Oh, I can already tell that there's gonna be some alterations to this. And then you just turn it right side out that way. <laughs> All right, now it's time to try on the glove and see if there are any areas where we need to adjust our pattern. So all my fingers turned out a little bit long and I think that has to do with how soft and stretchy this material is. I think that if I was using a less stretchy material like the stretch vinyl that I sometimes use to make gloves, I think this might be just right. But okay, so as we can see, my pinky finger is about a quarter inch too long. This is like, all of the other fingers are like fully a half inch too long. So I'm gonna make a note of that. And then right here on the wrist, I really think that needs to be about a half inch tighter there. I'm happy with the fit of the sleeve of the glove because I don't want to give myself like, you know, like 
our muffin top. So otherwise I'm really happy with this. So I'm gonna take this out, take this off. I'm gonna mark my alterations and I'm gonna transfer that over to my flat pattern as well. Mark the adjustments to your gloves from your notes. I took in the width on the fold side of my wrist, but actually I recommend doing it on the other side to keep your fold line clean. I would change this decision if I had a time machine. Now transfer your markings to your paper pattern. Take your freshly marked piece back to your machine and go ahead and stitch along those alteration lines. Now that it's stitched, cut out the excess. And I used an iron to lightly press the fingers to get rid of the lettuce leaf edge. Time to turn it again. All right, now that our alterations are complete, we're going to try it on again and see if everything worked out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, I'm noticing one thing now that I've made the wrist more fitted, which is I'm having a little bit of excess here. So if I wanted to keep going with my alterations, I would refine this area. But overall, I'm really happy with this. I'm really happy with the fingers and how they're fitting. You can keep going and making your tailoring and alterations as many times as you need to to be really happy with your gloves. I'm going to do this bit off camera, um, but you get the picture. I'm very pleased. They look great. And these are so soft. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'm a new channel, so I really appreciate it. If you want to see more tutorials in 60 seconds or less, head on over to my TikTok at Athena Lawton. And I'm also on Instagram as at Athena Lawton. Love yourself with some sewing. Make yourself something nice. See you next time.